Maker 2. I'm going to uh, just do a brief tutorial and show you what the uh, audio effects tracks, the built-in stock Ableton Suite effects. So, um, do so amp, we're going to start with essentially uh, is recreating a guitar amplifier. So this is really phenomenal for getting some low end as well as um, it's really beefing up any sound, basses, guitars. Um, pay attention, this is dual mono switch, which goes between stereo and mono output. And uh, yeah, just play around with some of these parameters. And uh, you can show you an example here what we got going on. Right? So there's our sample without the amp, and we'll add the amp back. Clearly see pretty unique sound you can get there. Okay. Moving on. If your audio filter, or auto filter, we'll go over the effect track here in a second. Um, auto filter is basically like an EQ. It's got a built-in, um, uh, excuse me, um, filters, different types of filters, low pass, high pass, and bandwidth. And it is very easy to come in here and actually modulate and automate, which if you don't know, we'll go over it at a different time. But basically you can easily just Click one of those parameters and come in here and draw in a map so you can have unique effects like this occur. So you can watch here what type of effect is actually occurring from doing that. And uh, you'll, one of the other key things to note, what are we looking at here? We'll let this keep rolling. Um, a lot of the uh, wobble dubstep bass sounds are using this parameter here, LFO in general, on any device. Um, but basically, if you play around with this, you end up getting some of the uh, really cool stuttering kind of wobble bass sounds on a kick drum here. It's going to be a little tricky, so let's... Uh, to look at a different sound here. All right, you can immediately see what we got going on. So, we turn down the amount on the LFO. We have our original sound here. We're gonna filter it out. Bring up the amount. The shape here is gonna be what type of wave, the sine, square, and triangle. And these are a couple variations of those. That, what type of wave is gonna be processing the audio? And you just have to go through there and different sounds will want a different style. Yeah, and like I said, these things are easy to go in and automate. Very quickly just come in and draw in some parameters. In Ableton Live 9, if you hold down Alt Option and uh, hold down Alt Option, bring your cursor near the line, that little extra curve shows up. When you click and drag, it's going to allow you to bend it actually, which will get you some really unique, fun effects there. So, alright, what do we got here? So we've got our auto pan next, and this will be, so we can hear. So we'll go back to our sound, auto pan is going to allow you to play with your stereo filled. Listen what's occurring there. Basically, um, moving left and right fills, you can change the speed at which that panning is occurring. And play with the phase and shape of that. Um, cool trick here in Ableton actually, I noticed has a stock one of it. So, load up basically with these parameters here. I, I kind of do my own take on it. I like that sound more a bit. Although, what is that? A nice sound. But uh, I, I prefer this style here when you call it chopper. Basically, as you can see, you get some really nice stuttering effects with this sound here. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off all of our effects here. You'll notice you can turn on and off an effect, the other way you can kind of demo it and see what you've done to the sound. Maybe you don't want it, maybe do. Be 
Dr. Pete is uh, somebody self-explanatory. don't use this a whole lot myself. I probably should. It's a really cool tool. But basically going to go in and choose different um, intervals of bar lengths that you can loop and then manipulate. And there's even some really cool pitching effects and even filtering, um, isolating what sound you want to be or what frequency you want to be looping. Um, so yeah. We got this here, chorus. So chorus is really nice for adding um, this sheer, like a sheen, how do I say, a really nice shimmery sound. Uh, it's focused typically on kind of the high and middle range more so. So here's this drum. So this is the completely clean version right now kit without any effects processing. You turn on the chorus. And you can see it adds some really nice harmonics to it. Uh, I find myself putting this on future bassy sounds and uh, screeching wobbles, stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna go back over the audio effects rack now, this uh, second one. If you uh, if you uh, if you select, click the top of one device and then hold Command and click another. Wait a minute. Hold the top of device, hold Shift and hit the top of another device. Uh, and however, you can hit as many devices as you want. And then after you've selected multiple of them, hit Command G. What it'll do is group them into a rack for you. And this is an audio effects rack. And it's easy to just come in here and rename it and then even save it into your own presets. Super handy little trick. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, this has some really cool abilities because what you can do is actually with the audio effect rack, you can set up multiple chains, right? So this one chain here that we're seeing, we'll say effects one, these devices here. You can set up another chain, in which case you could drag multiple different effects that you could line out along here. But it also has another ability, and that is to create um, an open channel, essentially, where I mean, you'll have to hit this uh, chain view to open up the hide. But what this is, is it, um, it's showing wherever this uh, marker is set to, is which um, chain is actually going to be allowed to have sound coming through. So with the, with the default is that it, the, all chains are completely open and all sound is able to come through at all times. But what you can do is you can actually come in here, and so we're gonna actually call this clean, um, or we'll say, uh, we'll say dry, right? So you can, so you move your cursor over and you'll get a different scroll bar here and you can drag that all the way out, right? What happens now is you can come back to the other side here. You just want to move it just off, right? See so it says one and then these are going to say zero, I believe. I know they do, but so zero, right? And you make sure you've come all the way to one here. And what you can do is set up a macro, right? And macros allow you to map anything to them. So you hit this little map button over here. Click whatever you want to map to the macro. So you're going to click the uh, the little automator up here. And then hit map. Get out of your map mode. And now what happens is you actually have a, wat, a wet and dry that you've just created between your... So you could create multiple different right effects up here. And you could actually even set it up right to where you could have... A, so just, all right, let's go back to what we were focused on, the dry and wet of a single two channels. You're going to need to do a couple more things just so we're clear. And that is draw these out. Yeah, how have I done this before? Oh, yeah. Draw them all the way out. And then if you move your cursor right up above to where the yellow bar you'll see kind of highlights. You probably have a different color. You have a different skin. But that gives you a fade. Right? You want to do the same thing on both of them. 
So now that you've automated this chain selector, you can just literally slide right between your effects chain, which we're just going to go with one channel at the moment. It's just a little confusing, but you could easily add in two and just have the exact same parameter, right? <clears throat> we'll call that effects two. Um, and yeah, so now you've got a wet dry. Okay, so audio effect rack, that's what that would look like. And if we can we'll give you a sound example here, so we're going to start out with a completely dry signal. We're going to bring in the wet. Right, so now sound is being processed through all these different devices. Cabinet is uh, similar to AMP. Well, AMP is recreating the AMP head, and then Cabinet is recreating the cabinet. Of course, we went over already. Compressor is going to be an entire uh, video at some point here. I'm going to skip through some of these. My, um, yeah, my computer just doesn't like OBS. It gets hot. So anyway, we'll get what we can out of all this. Uh, Corpus is a really cool little device that actually kind of helps you put timbre and turn almost any sound into a percussive sound. Um, dynamic tube is going to be a type of saturation, which is more or less a dynamic tube. It's trying to recreate an actual tube analog sound. So it's going to be more like a tape saturation. Um, more or less, uh, it's going to help bring more character and tone and warmth to your sound. Um, EQing, right? So I'm just going to go over the EQ8. EQ3 is essentially the same thing, just a lot more simple, more of a DJ's EQ, which is great for live use. Um, and actually, EQing is going to be an entire lesson, too, I think. Yeah. Computer is just getting a little hot here. We were doing a bunch of stuff tonight. We'll have to plan this better. Okay. So. Ocean. Uh, filter delay. Okay, so delays are phenomenal. Um, this is a delay that's going to split your audio signal, so whatever is coming in here is going to immediately be split into these three different bands. And uh, we'll load up an example. Right, so you've got your left and your right, and you can actually just solo out to this one here. Right, so it's here. This is the, the dry signal, remember? So it has no effect on it. And then it's obviously what a delay sound uh, delays do is they're gonna grab bits of audio, the audio itself, and move it around by the time interval you've set. This filter one, however, allows you to actually go in and set the filter of the left frequency, the filter of the right, in the middle, more or less, left and right, and give a different time sync based for each one of these sounds. A good one gives some really nice. There's some future sounds for you. Some dubstep. Okay. okay, yeah. Um, Grain delay. Oh, I didn't mean limiter. That'll be another lesson. Grain delay, once again, type of delay. This thing has some really nice stuff. Play with this spray up here. I'm just going to direct you. Um, feedback. Notice the dry wet is naturally at 100%, so you can play with that. Um, okay. Overdrive. Okay, this is a really good tip to remember. Um, something that I had learned a while back was that it's extremely important actually to use lots amount of small or lots of different types of small amounts of distortion so if that makes sense what I'm saying is you're gonna have 
overdrive or some type of drive here and it's going to be set at a really low so here's our clean sound what happens is this can really just once again bring out some harmonics and tone and warmth out of all of this So what I, what I was trying to say is essentially use small amounts of it all throughout your devices. Just uh, you'll, you'll start to hear it more you use it, but you can really bring out your overall mix, layering lots of little bits of distortion. Overdrive. Yeah. Uh, the phaser. This is, um, I've been using this uh, I've been using phasers in particularly to get uh, some of the like talking kind of futury trap sounds that are going on and kind of lasery. Um, once again, phaser and flanger, good for that. Ping pong delay is phenomenal. Um, yeah, this is a delay that actually it's a single delay that is uh, allows you to filter the actual delay. Um, so what's the, the actual delay signal is what you decide here and then your timing dry wet feedback um, one of the things to play with on the, both the simple delay and ping pong delay filter probably has it too um, is using the time as opposed to the um, hopefully hear what's going on here it's But you can map and come in here and actually automate this parameter, right? And you can get some really cool effects. Um, another thing about delay is that if you do a command click option on the title here, you've got these three options. Play with those. Um, when you actually come in and automate, um, it's, yeah, hear that? What happens is you can really get some cool bendy sounds. Um, yeah. Some pitch bending sounds. Okay. Redux is a bit reduction, uh, downsampling it. Um, this really brings out some, once again, harmonics. Uh, awesome. Reverb, go find a better reverb, know your reverbs. We'll have a lesson over that separate. Saturator, good. Yes, this once again is adding a type of analog warmth. Um, it's also a form of compression. We'll get into the details of that later and soft clipping. Yeah. There are some good keywords. If you don't know what they mean, go, go YouTube them. Um, and it's, I find watching multiple videos on the subject, I learn way more than just one video, um, especially in the world of art and music where everyone has their own twist and take of how they do things. Um, so simple delays, uh, just two delays. I think you'll get that pretty quick. I'm going to move in. Uh, Spectrum is a really great tool. So this I tend to keep on my master bus. And what happens is once you've got audio going, you can sit here and actually look at your spectrum, 20 hertz to 22,000 hertz. You can see like, for instance, this sound's got a lot of low end resonating, right? So let's see here. What you can do is actually watch a sound that's being affected. It's really really handy to look at your mix uh, so oh yeah well so make sure we went over this I haven't gone over this actually but the order of your devices in your signal chain here and so by opening and closing that I'm double clicking the grid um, the order of your devices drastically affects, I mean, it is, it's going to entirely affect um, how your sound is processed. So 
Now you can watch. Right, fun, fun stuff there. Okay. Resonators really cool. Kind of helps bring out like a metallic, metallic ping in um, whatever frequency you kind of focus it on different filter types to to do that. Uh, the audio tuner is phenomenal unless you have um, a new Ableton. This is a guitar tuner they put in here. Freaking great. Utility is really awesome um, for uh, game staging when you're getting to that place. And um, so what I've done in the past, I found a different way now, but if you've gone in and you've automated um, your volume level, you can do is, uh, you know, you've automated the volume, but then you need to make another volume change, and you're like, oh, crap, it's automated, right? Um, you you can just drop a utility on the track, and then one, you've got another gain control. Um, another useful thing is um, processing vocals um, when you're doing the first EQing on it before you're setting any spatial placement, um, as well as bass. Um, a lot of times you want to take the width out of those particular devices is all the way down. And this device lets you do that, which is really helpful. All right. Final distortion and another form of overdrive. Should probably use this more. And vocoders, that'll be an entire lesson. I think I'll have to watch a few even. I'm still trying to get those down. Okay. I think that's it for audio effects right now.